getting cool, the sun's going down, and uh, we just checking on the boats because it's been raining. We want to make sure the boats didn't float away with the river going up. But we've got our little floating houseboat. It's an Airbnb that we put on our camp up above. And the tour boat is there. Everything is in tip-top shape and ready to go. And uh, so is the garden. It's gardening time. And so I have been busy growing all my own seedlings. And so seedlings you grow at different times, like there are cold weather seedlings and then there are warm weather seedlings. So all my cold weather seedlings, uh, they're in the garden already. Cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, onions. I started all those in the house real early or in, the, in, the, in my little greenhouses. You'll see them in just a minute. But now I just did another whole set of uh, seedlings and it's the warm weather, like tomatoes and eggplants and green peppers. They can't handle the frost, but the others can, the cabbages and the onions and the, uh, and the broccolis and uh, the garlics and asparagus. Man, we have had so much asparagus this year. It is phenomenal. Oh, sauteed in butter with a nice crisp hamburger next to it. My goodness. All right, so listen, come on over with me and I'm gonna show you how I start out my seedlings using worm castings. And I use a lot of them too. Worm castings are the best fertilizer on the planet and can revitalize soils that have been ravaged by chemical fertilizers. Captain Matt is not your average worm farmer. This year, he'll produce 10 tons of worm castings in his garage to sell in his local community. Matt wants to mentor you to help you achieve your worm goals. He doesn't throw big words or complicated information at you. He's a farmer with dirt under his fingernails. He'll teach you proven approaches that work. Come on over here. Here's the, here's, uh, these, these are greenhouses. And uh, you know, I, I considered building a big greenhouse and spending a lot of money on it. And then I realized that's ridiculous. You only use it for a short amount of time. And then I had the idea of taking clear topped, clear sided, totes with locks on the side and uh, put all my seedlings in there and grow them in here. This one here has was planted two days ago. Those plants are twice as big as they were when I put them in there. These are eggplants and uh, those are sweet potatoes over there and tomatoes. Over here we got flowers, geraniums. First time I ever did geraniums and they worked really nice. Um, Zinnias here, garlic, strawberries, more cabbage and all sorts of stuff. Well, let's see what we have over here. We've got peppers there, all eggplant and peppers, and peppers. And we have nibbler peppers, so really tiny little things that you can pick. They're free, they have no seeds, they're not hot, they don't grow big, but they grow hundreds of them on a plant and you can just keep picking them all summer. So the, the mix for all of my seedlings is I use one quarter worm castings, one quarter perlite, one quarter compost, leaf compost, and one quarter peat moss. Mix that up really, really good and you've got yourself one hearty, hearty mix. Some people say, I don't, you can't use that much of this and that much of that. Bottom line is just make sure you have plenty of worm castings in there and good drainage and you're fine because young plants don't need a whole bunch. It's in the garden that we have to be a little more concerned where they're gonna grow all summer. But out here, you, you just wanna get them started and give them a place where they can breathe and where they can feed. This is a multi-use uh, closet here. It's, it's been a worm nursery, it's been a bathroom, it's a grow room right now, and who knows what we use it for next. But come on in, and we've got some of our stuff. And this is, this is where I, I start the, start the the seedlings. These are peppers. We've got some red maples here, cana, and then over here I'm growing some ginger, uh, which should be coming up soon, and we've got some sweet potato. That Those two little sweet potatoes keep growing, and I keep snipping them, and then I put them in water like that. I just did it today, so I can't show you the roots, but they in three days they root up, and then I immediately plant them again. So from these this one potato laterally sliced and put in water, uh, I will produce probably 14 sweet potato plants. How are you using worm castings in here? Same way, it, the mixes are all the same. The, the big thing about this room is it has a heater and I keep it at 80 degrees and every seed will germinate really fast. 
if we're uh, germinating uh, with the right kind of moisture and, um, and heat, and we have the temperature. Plants, starting plants at 80 degrees is like the best. Let me show you how I make the mix, and it, it will just take a minute. So I'm gonna give you a, just a short tip on how we do it. This here is, I can tell, you say, well, how do you tell the difference between this and this? Because that is black gold right there, and this is brown stuff. This is uh, right here. We have uh, one, one, one part uh, compost, one part worm castings. Now, some people say that is way too much worm castings to put in, and that's fine. You don't have to put it in, but I like to have a lot of worm castings in, and it's never been a problem for me. One part perlite, one part peat moss, and uh, boy, you mix the two up. The peat moss helps everything stay light. The perlite uh, is used to, for aeration. You really need uh, uh, aeration for your roots when you're growing little, little uh, plants. You want, those, you want the, the soil to be soft, and that's the peat moss, and you want the perlite to bring the oxygen and make room for the uh, for the roots to grow really easily. And that's it, it's as simple as that. Then I'll take some water, and I use, everything I use inside now is mosquito bit water. I always have a mosquito bit dunk uh, in everything, and that will help us so that the fruit flies aren't laying eggs in our young tender plants. And so we'll just mix that in. Say, so Captain Matt, do I need to do this with my hands? Well, you can use a hoe or something if you want, but I just like to get my hands in it. I'm not your average farmer, you know. I have dirt under my fingernails. <laughs> okay, and, and that's it. Now, the peat moss is going to dry it out a little bit more because peat moss takes a little longer to absorb water. But right now, if I squeeze that, I'm barely, I think if I squeeze really hard, I could get a drop. But that's a great, great way to start your planting. What I do is I hold the bay, I'll put the seed down um, on top of this to grow it. But when I'm transplanting that uh, into a pot, I'll hold the plant and drop the roots in an empty container and then sprinkle the soil all around it. And that just kind of, you know, helps the roots uh, be established without bending, cracking, and breaking. But that's it. It's as simple as that. And uh, that will grow you. I mean it. We looked at those tomatoes. They grew... They doubled in size in two days, and it's been cold here with those little greenhouses and with worm castings in the starter. So I already put the uh, brassica family in the garden. That's broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, kale, and Brussels sprouts. They're in. Onions are in already. But when it comes, they can, those can handle a frost, but a tomato plant cannot, nor, nor can an eggplant or a pepper plant. So we're waiting till the 15th to put those guys in. So I have two more weeks, and after two weeks, um, we'll be putting those in. By then, um, my plants will probably outgrow the greenhouse, the rate they're growing right now. But we'll wait, we don't want a frost hitting them. And so I'll put them in the 15th. Some people say, now nah, you have to, in the Northeast, you have to wait till Memorial Day. And I'm like, no, I always like to push that a little bit. So I'll go to the 15th. And if I know there's a frost coming, I'll cover them somehow or another and keep the frost off the leaves. I hope this helps you. This is another way to use worm castings. And you know, uh, you say, well, where are you getting all these worm castings? Hey, we just launched our Learn to Worm course. It will tell you everything you need to know to start off and to become a wormer and to raise worms because worms give you castings, and castings are the greatest fertilizer on the earth. It's the first thing that we priced other than selling our hats, and we only did that because everybody kept asking us, you gotta sell a hat, we want a hat. So we went ahead and made a worm people hat. I would gladly pay triple uh, for that uh, years ago when I was first learning to worm, just for the information involved in there. All right, worm people, so that's it for tonight. Thanks again for being there. Thanks for being our friend, and thanks for encouraging me with all your wonderful thoughts. I was thinking about the course, 50% of what I've learned, I've learned from other people, like you, worm people, that have sometimes corrected me and other times suggested things, and, and sometimes I ask questions of other people. But uh, this is not something that, oh, Captain Matt must have gone to college and learned all this. No, I learned it from you guys. 
and, and from experience and doing it. So until next video and next time we meet, guys, God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful worm week. Subscribe now and then head over to wormpeople.com to jumpstart your worm farming journey.